Oh, this is way better. All right, we are now including force. So we've gone down past those constant acceleration formulas here, and we're starting to include this little bit here, which is Newton's second law, F equals ma. For rotation, it's T equals I alpha. It's really Newton's second law still, but it's for rotation now instead of linear. Wheel diameter, 850, da-da-da. So we're going to work out this radius here, which will be, of course, uh, half of 850. So radius will be uh, 425 millimetres. Be, be careful, though, because we have to do it in metres, so it'll be 0 0.425 metres. Make sure you're using the right units here. You can't use millimetres in the middle of an equation because everything works in metres. And the force here is 4 kilonewtons, so it's 4 kilonewtons here. What is the braking torque? So we're using the equation for torque, which is torque equals force times perpendicular radius. Now this is perpendicular, it's by definition here. So we just uh, force, which is 4,000, that's in newtons, times radius is in meters. So our torque is supposed to be newton meters here. And our force is in, must be in newtons then, and our radius must be in meters. So that's times 0 0.425. 4,000 times 0 0.425, 1,700. So the torque is 1,700 newton meters. The units there are newton meters. Okay, we got a uh, alternator being driven by the uh, the drive pulley down here. So this drive pulley is spinning and making this thing spin. Here's a question for you: Which way is it spinning? Not using um, drive pulley clockwise, anti-clockwise knowledge, but what can we tell from those tensions? Now, what's happening, this motor is driving the alternator, not the other way around. The alternator is not driving the motor. So this must be driving that. Now, we have tension A and tension B relative to the drive pulley because it's pulling the pulley. But if it was relative to the alternator, those arrows would be the opposite way. All right, so A is 514, 514 up here. And B is 364, so 364 down here. Which one's tighter? The top one. All right, now, this is tighter. Which way is it going? It has to be going that way. Because, no, that would be wrong. This one's tighter, so it must be spinning that way because this is the drive pulley. So the drive pulley is pulling it. Pulling it means that it's pulling harder on the top. This is getting more tension in it than the bottom has. So therefore we know what direction it must be going this way, which is anti-clockwise. What is the torque on the drive pulley? We're saying how much torque is on the drive pulley, which is this 120 newton meter. So if we were to set this up in a balance of torque forces, right, there's our radius, which is 120 mils, so it's at 0 0.06 meters. And one of them is pulling 514. The other one, which is also in tension, in other words, the belt might slip, is 364. All right, so one torque's going one way, that's a clockwise torque. The other torque's going the other way, anti clockwise. And we're trying to find what the total torque is. So the torque will be force times distance, 514, times 0.06, minus its opposite direction, 364 times 0 0.06. And let's have a look at each of those torques while we're at it. So 514 times 0.06. That was a 30.84 there. Newton meters. And the other one is 364 times 0.06. 21.84 newton meters 
of torque on that one. So it leaves us with nine. Nine newton meters. What is the torque on the drive pulley? Nine newton meters. Bit of a um, thought question going on here. They're all wheels, they all have the same mass. So each one's circular. They see how you have a center line through the middle? So they actually look like this. There's your first one. The second one looks like that. Third one is a longer, skinnier cylinder. Fourth one's a sphere. Fifth one's a funny looking thing. It sort of looks like a spinning top kind of arrangement. And this last one is also a bit weird. Goes to a point. A bit hard to draw. That's what we're looking at. Which one has the biggest, uh, rank them in, in mass moment of inertia. Now remember the mass moment of inertia is how much is the mass further towards the outside? Because it's R squared times M. So mass moment of inertia equals MR squared. So the more you get the mass away from the center like this thing here, the more you're gonna increase your um, I. So this will have a really good I. So that's probably the maximum one because that's much designed a lot like a flywheel. And this one, where the radius is as small as possible, you've packed all the mass right down next to the axis. So, so this will have a minimum second moment, uh, mass moment of inertia. All right, so we can sort those two out. So there's your max and there's your min. And you'll sort the rest of them out in between. So it's going to be a situation, a bit of a guess somewhere along the line, but as long as you get those two, that should give you a good um, start. Another mass moment of inertia question here, which is uh, which one, uh, what happens when you let these go when they roll down the hill? So first of all, um, they weigh the same. It's just whether you put the brass cylinders towards the outside or towards the inside. When they're on the inside here, it has a low, this one has a low mass moment of inertia. And when you put them to the outside, it has a high mass moment of inertia. So when I'm trying to, um, uh, when I let them go, one of them's gonna start off faster. So that one with the mass towards the inside is gonna start off nice and quick. Whereas this, the other mass, which has the masses towards the outside, is going to start off slow. By the time it gets to the bottom of the hill, this one gets to the bottom of the hill first. This one's only up to here. But if you had a hill on the other end that went back up to the same height, this would still get back up to the end. And this one that's going slower will also get up to the end as well. So how is that possible? Even though it's going slower, what happens is it's got, by the time it's got to the bottom here, it's going slower, but it's got more rotational inertia. So it's got a slower linear inertia because the velocity is down, but the mass moment of inertia, which is high. So this has more rotational inertia, and this one has more linear inertia. But the sum of the inertias, if you add up the linear plus the rotation, it's the same constant because that is equal to your gravity times the height there you go now we're doing a mass moment inertia calculation here we've got a solid cylinder so that'll be this equation here we're looking at box number three and it has a diameter of 889 and a mass of that of that so the equation is I equals m r squared divided by two. The mass is 540. Make, make sure you, you're using the right units all the way through, base units. Mass is kilograms, yes. Radius, 
So it's 0.889 divided by 2, we have to do, because it's supposed to be radius, not diameter, 0.889 divided by 2. So it's 0 0.445, not 0 0.4445 squared. have to make this into a radius. Right now, let's do that. So that's squared. Oh, do it again. Square that times 540. We get 106.7. And that's kilogram meters squared. They're the units for mass moment inertia, kilograms here, and meters squared there. So that's why that's in kilogram meters squared. One oh six point seven units are kilogram meter squared. That's a 540 solid cylinder. Mass moment of inertia, kilogram meter squared. 540, 889, let's just check that again. 0 0.889 divided by 2 squared times 540. 106.7. What are you talking about? Uh, you get a power A. You get an A. Oh no, we did times. Just divided by 2000. That's correct. We power that. And B. Isn't that? What are we dividing by two for? I can do that. Oh, because it's my two. Ah, oh, what did I do? Forgot to divide by two. Whoops. That was silly. That was my mistake. Yeah, you're supposed to then divide all that by two. Divide by two. That was the answer, 53.3. Divided by 2, divided by 2, 53.3 kilogram meters squared. My mistake. Okay, next question. We have a um, grinder. This time we have we're given the mass moment inertia. That's I. Now, what torque is required to accelerate the wheel? So, what torque is required T to accelerate the wheel from 2880 uh, to, uh, from zero, obviously, to 2880 in 1.56? So, there's a double question here. We first of all have to do linear motion. This thing, alpha T. To find our alpha first, so it's starting off at zero, going up to 2880, we need to convert that one across. 2880 times pi on 30. So it's going down 301.593. That's in radians per second. 301. So we've got that. Uh, we're trying to find alpha because we're going to be using that in a sec and the time was 1.15 seconds. All right, so our good old favorite equations. Been using it all day. And we're trying to find alpha. So alpha equals omega minus omega naught divided by t equals omega 301. minus zero 
divided by 1.15. So divided by 1.15, that's 262.25 radians per second squared. Right, that's the linear motion, or rotary in this case. That's the constant acceleration formulas. Constant acceleration. Now we do T equals I alpha second part of this Newton's second law all right what is the torque requires so the torque is what we're after torque equals I 0.83 are those units correct kilograms per square uh, kilogram meter squared that's correct times alpha 262.25 so we're just multiplying that thing times 0.83 217.67 217.67 Newton meters. I don't think that thing would have anything like that amount of torque. You could probably hold it with your hand, but don't. Um, 217.67. 217.67. So we probably had mass moment inertia is probably not that high, and it may not accelerate up to full speed in one second either. It might take longer than that. Okay, those units are torque, so it's in newton meters. All right, now we have the very last question here is a flywheel, um, and it's speeding up. <coughs> um, sorry, it's. Do, 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 do. Oh no, this is the same as that one we saw before, where it's uh, generating electricity uh, for four point nine seconds, and it's decelerating. Um, what's the final RPM? All right, so we've got our decelerate. This is, um, once again, this is a double barrel one, only it's around the other way. We go our T equals I alpha first, and then find uh, the linear motion to get our <coughs> final angular velocity. All right, so we go T equals I alpha. That's what we're working with. Now let's just go through the equation. We're doing a second, so that's time. The speed, its speed is going. That's your initial angular for decelerating. You use it when deceleration, which you have to find. We have got our torque T, the rotational inertia. That's your I. It already tells you it's I. What's the final RPM? Our omega. <coughs> All right. So um, we're trying to find alpha. So alpha equals T over I, and our torque is twenty-two. And our I is 0.16. That's your deceleration, 137.5 radians per second squared. Good. That's that bit. Now we go back to our five variables. And tick off the ones that we know. We've got time there is 4.9. Um, we've got our alpha, which we just calculated. That's that one there. Um, we've got our initial angular velocity, yes. And we're trying to find our final angular velocity. So we'll say omega equals omega naught plus alpha t. Be careful with all of your units here. This is decelerating, remember. So our omega naught, we're going to get that 55,000 across. So 50, it's going, hey, 55,000 RPM times pi over 30. It should be a smaller number because we're going from RPM down to radians per second. 55, 1, 2, 3, times pi on 30. So it's 5759.6. radians per second so that's that number there then we add alpha which is 137.5 times the time of 4.9 so there's our number plus 
137, sorry, 0 0.5 times 4.9 equals 6433. 6433. Three. And it says, what is the final RPM? Be careful, that was radians per second, so we need to then convert that over back to RPM. So times by 30 and divide by pi equals. Pew! It's going. Hang on a minute. How did it do that? Our acceleration is negative, so that can't be right. We couldn't have sped up. Alright, so we're supposed to subtract this one here because that acceleration is minus. Slowing down. Let's just go back a bit. So we had our 5. Let's start with that one there. Subtract 137.5 times 4.9. Alright, that gives us 5085. 5085. And now we convert that over to res per minute. So it's 5085 times pi over 30. Now, the number should go bigger, so it's times 30 over pi. So we're going to reps per minute. So it's that number times 30 divided by pi. 48,566. 48,566 RPM. So look, right, it was going 55. Now it's slowed down to 48. That looks about right, maybe. Let's see how we go. 48,566 and the units are revs per minute. Bingo. Alright, so that's the end of quiz number three. Let me just find my window.